if your lordship is so careful about not even allowing repetitive bites at the apple to destabilize a government your lordship will allow an external incursion without even a single uh, no confidence motion i'm not repeating only i'm giving lordship in addition the larger context not even an attempt but well, as they say the proof of the pudding is the eating if you have the confidence move the no confidence it's your lack of confidence which makes you not move the no confidence because you know how the no confidence will be met and may the best man win if you have the guts and the courage to do it whatever will happen will happen that's the process of democracy on the floor incidentally when i have done the maths that chart i mean it is not that your lordship will only ask them to show the material we are having a preliminary objection that the governor doesn't come into it irrespective of the material even if he has seen the material i am now on concept i am on juristic principle there is no role of the governor till now till whatever i have said 2 1 etc process no confidence no role for the governor it's a second separate question on facts what the governor saw did not see but he had no locus to see or not to see so what's the point of going into the, down that path fellows the governor had no locus at that stage to see or not to see well is it would really amount to a very strange thing where the governor would well governor are malus now uh, obviously malus shall also reach the debates of mr ambedkar and now malus there's a vast difference uh, but governors are also malus creatures of political uh, malus uh, connection the governor would say well i see a group of people here why why are you bothered about moving the no confidence come to me we will see something there is no need for us the assembly gets well as substituted you will be circumventing and short circuiting the entire process of a no confidence on the floor yes now well as having given that answer let me turn to my larger point on which well as i was really going to address your lordships and give a lordship just bullet facets and then i will well as give a lordship the material underlying it, the juristic principles as to why your lordships should malus deal with the matter here now i understand malus that it is easier not to deal with it here it is also equally possible not to deal with it here there is a speaker my lord has heard enough facts so lord should take those facts as given i will touch upon the facts here and there but mostly no in the event that the facts and the context suit your lordship's discretion on this issue should your lordships in law juridically refer it or should you hear it is my well uh, as respectful submission well as there are four four or five legal facets that i'll make well, give us the case law the first is well as that there were two malus one negative and one positive order by the honorable supreme court that should be remembered in whichever way malus it is worded the negative i call it injunction on 27 6 2022was that by the expedient of extending time the speaker was effectively de facto could not pronounce on disqualification it is nothing but an injunction in substance till 12 till 12 correct, correct. then events took over malus the events took over but my lord is right till 12 therefore malus let us look at it because the lordship is always a court of substance we can camouflage in so many forms but your lordship ultimately see this in substance it said judicial injunctive interim relief to a speaker's future action under the 10th schedule that is the correct way of putting it it is malus a judicial interim intervention it's a negative injunction and the second was a positive injunction if i may call it or a order of 29th allowing the trust vote to be held so not injuncting the second day injuncting the first day so there is a negative judicial intervention followed by an affirmative judicial intervention malus i am not making any value judgment 
the lord should have, would have heard it next week two weeks later who knows but everything could have been reversed i mean i'm not saying that at all i'm not saying right or wrong but i'm saying one thing is clear that the formation of a government i'm making a neutral statement i'm not always allocating is clearly the direct and inevitable result of the combination of these two orders the lord should have heard it next week and upheld it so lord should be right the lord should have reversed it or should be wrong in the interim then that's not the point the point is let us not believe see this case in the abstract in an ivory tower unrealistic approach let us see it in reality well as we have to smell the constitutional coffee if i may say so the reality is this well that absent these two negative and positive orders your lordships cannot have this consequence of a change or a new government this will have well as correctly an effect on your lordships needing to decide this year then well as the second aspect i am only giving the legal bullets i'll cite the case law later on this the second legal aspect the juristic principle is the language of that order now we all say it but casually sometimes your lordship is also made to say it casually but these are terms of art your lordship has used them for decades and centuries in law and these common law terms of art have to be given effect to don't go to the page just note your lordship's order on 29th read like this one line quote can quote subject to the final outcome of the instant writ petition as well as the writ petitions referred to above unquote but the first time your lordship's ordered demolition the first time not now of a 20 story structure was when almost 15 years ago demolition in that sense with people living and concrete and mortar in the building is much more ir- irreversible than merely a political thicket or a scrambled political egg created from 22 to now now i come to what subject to means the object of this phrase subject to are two and three fold but this one is that your lordship swells speaks in rem not just bilaterally between the parties your lordship speaks to the whole system to the whole world and second your lordship is giving a fair warning that everything which is happening after this is subject to but on your risk and cost and thirdly your risk and cost means all consequences equities vested rights all status quo you create each day after that is it your risk and cost we are warning you don't blame us later that's the meaning of well, this and i'll cite a case presently on that therefore well, is the moment either or should doesn't say it the moment your lordship says that no one can come and plead equities vested rights events scrambled egg irreversibility etc etc because your lordship takes into account this in advance if your lordship passes subject to today it is different from passing in 2022 june we should take your lordship principally to some very interesting underlying juristic principles which should impel your lordships to decide this matter here and not consider the various options or suggestions of sending it back to the speaker that's going to be the bulk of my argument the very important question which fell from the bench and the honorable chief justice in particular about the role of the governor well it's this is a very unique and a strange case and i would say from this side a sorry case where lordships has double whammies and triple whammies let me explain how my lord will put the question of the governor's role and in an one sentence the question is that if your lordships found that if the governor found that there is something to be decided by way of unstable majorities even if you exclude 39 why can't he go and have a trust vote etc or, or a decision on the true majorities in the confidence of the house well as the first thing when you start on that query has been perhaps was not given sufficient weight and the first thing is that your lordship's fundamental rock solid principle of interpretation of constitution and statutes is that if intentionally a constituent assembly in its amending power of the constitution delete something your lordship gives full effect and scope to the intendment behind that deletion that is well as axiomatic it is obvious 
क्यों नहीं वजह कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और स्टैच्यूट मच लेस अ कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट वे आर लॉर्डशिप इंटेंशन इज टू गिव इफेक्ट टू दर इंटेंशन सो पैरा थ्री इज बीन डिलीट नाम पैरा थ्री डिलीशन इज नॉट अ स्मॉल थिंग there are debates there is a sor the constituent assembly the constituent parliament in its constituent uh, capacity said look we must delete it why this case is bizarre is that there are you know, three at least two circumventions of the deletion directly by high constitutional authorities circumvention one is clearly this way or that way whether the governor can do it or not do it or will decide separately but clearly and specifically the governor is acting on a presumption of a split in whatever way he is acting now as the governor most of all is supposed to know the constitution all of us are supposed to know the constitution and ignorance of the law is no excuse much less ignorance of the constitution there is no system and i am not talking of the lots of narrow question of trust or not trust there is no basis on which your lordships can reconcile and harmonize the factual invitation and oath giving on the one hand with the legal deletion of para 3 that's my proposition the two is two are irreconcilable and well that is a very major constitutional sin underlying this whole well supposition and 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 context the second makes this well even more bizarre well is there is a direct finding in not one but many paras of the ec order that this is a split i am not asking lord sir shah is right we are not on the appeal on that that's not the point i am arguing yeah, i am on the context well is people are here going around merrily on the assumption of a split then only the lord sir might as well wind up the tenth schedule the constitutional amendment the deletion what's the point of it the second answer your lord sir decides cases not that your lord sir decides the narrowest of narrow issue lord sir decides the whole context But the lawyer doesn't decide beyond the context of a case. The lawyer is very careful; otherwise, all the things of a biter and all that come in. And the lawyer doesn't have time to spend on hypothetical questions. But the, let us see the context. The context of this case can be divided into broadly two or three, three or four categories. And that context makes it clear that your lawyers need not be bothered about the governor coming into the picture at all. The first phase of this context is. the expedient of giving a disabling notice i call it a disabling notice before i intend to defect now that will be awaiting your lordship's decision on nabab so phase 1 or part 1 of this context is disabling notice your lordship must decide in nabab means that's the whole argument we made for two days but clearly the context is that step 1 and if that is wrong then a lot of things fall down and that is wrong in case a lawyer doesn't agree with the literal text of nabab the second part is that we are also forgetting repeatedly the object of the tenth schedule well as more than any other jurisprudence in this part subject of constitutional law is our cases again and again talking of two things the evil prior to 84 the object of plugging that evil the mischief rule and what your lordship is doing by the tenth schedule the third is that if your lordship accepts that the basic object of the tenth schedule is a constitutional sin being precluded or stopped or reduced then malus 2 1 a or b as the case may be has to be decided first it's logically prior means to everything not only is it prior in terms of serial number but conceptually it has to be logically prior to any decision of any kind in any case i'm talking of concept i'm not talking of a delay by an individual speaker means the kerala speaker will decide tomorrow nagaland speaker may take 6 months a manipur speaker will take that's not the point conceptually the logically prior decision has to be para 2 not a governor's intervention collaterally in any which way that's the structure of the tenth schedule and that scheme and structure must be well endorsed and strengthened by a lordship interrelia by not accepting any collateral incursion 
horizontally sideways by a governor while that 2 1 is still pending. The four. other aspect of this village which has to be given a lot of weight is well as apart from what we just talked about the trust vote people tend to forget that in every almost every assembly there is a very interesting rule you cannot bring re, bring repetitive no confidence motions also six months your lordship knows six months so i bring a no confidence against you i lose it i can't come after next week again say i have no confidence against you so, Malas, the next facet of this is the processes within the parliament and assembly have to be allowed to work themselves out first before external intervention. And one of the important processes is to notify a confidence or a lack of confidence. Yes. 